Welcome to iDesign Presents. I'm Roxanne Hines. Today's learners rely heavily on the use of digital media to share and consume information. In the world of instructional design and technology, there are a variety of audio and media production techniques that we seek to understand, master, and use to create effective digital learning objects. An interesting technique that has changed the way in which we see the passage of time in the world around us is time-lapse photography. This video will introduce you to what time-lapse photography is, its history, and how you can use it to facilitate and enhance learning. Let's get started. Shalinsky defines time-lapse photography as a cinematography technique whereby the frequency at which film frames are captured, aka the frame rate, is much lower than that which will be used to play the sequence back. The technique involves taking multiples of photos of a subject that changes imperceptibly slowly over a period of time and then assembling them in sequence to create a video that shows the transformation of the subject at what appears to be a high speed. A subject may be recorded at one frame per second, for example, and then the frames are played back at 24 frames per second, resulting in a 24 times increase in speed. Time-lapse photography has a history that is over a century old. Photographer Edward Muybridge is credited with being the first to use the technique. Muybridge was hired by former governor of California, Leland Stanford, in 1872 to prove that, contrary to popular belief at the time, horses lift all four legs off the ground as they gallop. What resulted in 1878, six years later, was the classic image, The Horse in Motion, photographed by Muybridge. This image shows a racehorse with all legs off the ground and beneath the horse mid-gallop, rather than with the forelegs extended forward and the hind legs extended behind, as was believed to happen with a galloping horse. Since Muybridge's breakthrough, the technique continued to be refined and applied in other areas. Georges Milliers became the first to use time-lapse photography in a feature film in Carrefour de l'Opera, produced in 1897. German botanist Wilhelm Pfeffer first used the technique in a short film in 1898 to show the stages of plant growth. Since the 19th century, time-lapse photography has become an important technique for observing and studying a wide variety of subjects. With just a digital camera, anything from a DSLR with built-in intervalometer or a camera phone with time-lapse software and a tripod, you can create instructional videos that enable learners to examine processes that would be difficult to observe in real time. These include processes such as the decomposition of fruit, blooming flowers, and a burning candle. Time-lapse photography may not be one of the basic techniques that are consistently used in digital media production. However, it is undoubtedly a technique that creates a unique impact that no other technique can create and can be a useful tool in the creation of digital media in education. The technique has not only allowed us to observe things that we wouldn't normally have seen, it has also helped us to view phenomena differently and observe minute changes in subjects over time. Mm -hmm. 